Good morning, everybody. Well, it's been a long time, hasn't it? It's been over a month, I think, since I've made a video. Um, recently, I'm just getting over the flu. Haven't been sick for quite some time. Many, many years, by the way. But, uh, yeah, this was quite a doozy. And the reason I'm making a video now, and I didn't make one before, mostly because I'm doing, as you all know, another uh, program. We're doing a live stream. A friend of mine, of mine and myself, he's from Australia. And what we were doing is a lot of news, and it's live stream, two hours. And it's on Sundays and Wednesdays. So it's kind of repetitive if I do a, another news channel, or at least uh, maybe some sort of a channel here. It's not so bad if I just do my opinion or something like that. At least it makes it a little bit different than reporting news like what I did before. But the reason why I'm making a video right now is because I was told that uh, somebody had mentioned this channel on a different channel. It's uh, a family in Russia that, well, they're actually Canadian. They moved to Russia. And I think they have, maybe it was eight children. I've seen this, the, the show a few times. Really uh, outstanding family. The father is a real, he's a real father figure. and. They're a religious group, I guess. They came from Canada. And they're trying to make a new life in Russia. And I think a lot of it is trying to leave the immorality of the, what's going on in the West, you know, and the, the vast decline of the West. And these people are just trying to uh, preserve maybe mostly Christianity or morality, you know, family decency in a world that is just closing in on you in the West where they're starting to look like they want to legalize pedophilia and everything like that over there in the West. And over here they're trying to preserve the old ways, you know, and it's not like you're going to make, uh, say, homosexuality against the law, but promoting homosexuality is against the law over here. So you can't go around and try to tell, it's not, not like Obama, you know. Um, what happened, I believe, in Russia at some point in time, they were uh, uh, making it illegal <laughs> to, promote, to promote homosexuality, to promote homosexuality. And I guess in the United States, of course, like they twist everything around, they said, they've illegalized or made it illegal to be homosexual. And of course, you can't do that. What people are going to do in their own time and their freedom of their own home is, is uh, <laughs> it's not going to be under scrutiny. If, if anything, it's going, to, it's going to be under scrutiny in the United States. I remember Rick Sanatore running for president. He wanted to put cameras in people's bedrooms. You never know what's going to happen in the United States at some point in the future. All of the crazy, crazy stuff going on over there. So anybody trying to get away from that stuff, I guess you can come over here to countries like Russia or Belarus and hold your, uh, for the most part, uh, European traditional values what the United States was built on, a lot of these older foundations. So, but, uh, <laughs> yes. So in any case, I, uh, I thought I would make a video for those people that, are, uh, that heard about that. And I guess I saw seven new subscribers, six or seven new subscribers onto my channel. And I guess it's uh, those people, even though I never made a video in all that time. So that's, uh, I thought I would feel obligated to to make a video. Anyway, this, if you can see the, the hat from the other side, that is the name of the channel that my friend and I are actually making. But of course, we can't have that on YouTube because we talk about things that uh, I guess you could say is <laughs> taboo on YouTube. You know, you don't have a freedom of expression on YouTube. You don't have a freedom of the press. Uh, you have to go along with what they believe in and you have to support those ideas so on YouTube so this it's actually only on rumble so you have to go on rumble from the other side on rumble.com so and then you know there's a little bit of problems it's not rumble's not quite as good as uh, in some ways as as is YouTube but in some ways of course it's better you have a lot more freedom of speech or things like that on on rumble and in YouTube, as you see, they're trying to tell everybody what you can think. 
what is correct and what isn't correct, politically correct, I guess you could say. So, and there's a lot more freedom on, on Rumble. And of course, maybe X is trying to become a lot like that too, but you never know. I don't know, Elon Musk isn't perfect. He's just a lot better than a lot of other, I hope this wind doesn't blow off my head. He's just a lot better than a lot of other, I guess, billionaires. And it's just similar to like to Donald Trump. Donald Trump isn't perfect. There's a lot of things I really don't like about Donald Trump, things that he did, but uh, um, he's just better than the other ones. That's all I could say. And I didn't like the fact that he, he murdered uh, Soleimani and 16 other people, which were going after, supposedly after ISIS, you know? So we don't know who is ISIS, <laughs> who supported ISIS. It uh, mostly points out to the fact that it's a US group, it's a US proxy group, just like Al Qaeda was, and there's just way too much evidence of that. And the United States just supports one group after the next, depending on what their, <laughs> what their mission is, if they wanna get rid of Assad, and there's some group that seems to be wanting to get rid of Assad as well, so they go and they back that group. And, and that's how things go in the United States, you know? They just, and, and they have nothing against trying to support the most evil people they can possibly do it in order, in order for them to get their, reach their goals and their, very disgusting, very disgusting. And mostly, I'll just want to say, see this, this video, I'm not looking at any notes or anything. I'm not doing any news. I'm, I'm mostly just talking about, uh, you know, that I'm coming, I should be coming back a little bit. I don't know if I should be doing, uh, you know, some travel videos, because I think a lot of people, maybe they're interested in travel videos or seeing how life is over here in Belarus. And uh, it's nothing like what the United States tells you, that there's no food in the shops and things like that. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's uh, I don't know, the United States seems to have a tremendous propensity of propaganda and lies and things just like what we were told was supposed to be about the Soviet Union. And in maybe some ways the Soviet Union was like that, some ways. But I have, of course I'm finding out it's not anything near what the United States was, uh, was trying to tell us or God forbid what the UK has been telling their own people. I, th I think the UK is even worse right now than the United States ever was. So, yeah, it's really terrible. It's like somebody going to work here. This is, uh, I believe, over here, uh, I think it's a Japanese hotel. She probably works there. In the summertime, I think, and there's a pool, I believe, down in the basement over here, if I remember properly. You know, I don't know, people go on walks or something. I am almost only guessing because I was walking through here uh, this summer. I'll tell you what, things are a lot nicer here in the summertime. This was just uh, winter. Is, uh, it's sort of coming to an end. You see little piles of snow in some places. Actually, we had a lot of snow just a day or two ago. And, uh, you know, traffic was bad and all that, but things warm up. It's uh, like we get some real warm days and then we get some cold days. And today is neither. Sort of in between. I'm gonna just walk out this way and find out. I'm always on a voyage of discovery. Uh, by the way, I'm in Minsk if I didn't already mention that. So, and it's in the dead of winter, I suppose you'd say. It's uh, 24th of February, 2024. So, but maybe the most important thing I'd like to say is, you know, if you're gonna, if you, if, if you guys wanna follow my channel, mostly what I'm talking about, I, I'm, I'm looking at a lot of this stuff going on in the world right now, and, and it's, uh, it's uh, maybe the closest thing I could say uh, to come to this Canadian family as they seem to be a highly moral family. And, uh, and I tell you, I, I'm just kind of sick looking at what's going on in the world. And, and I came here and a lot of us came here mostly because we want to get away from this immorality. And, and like if you're in the United States or the UK and you're paying taxes, it supports this aggression against a lot of these other countries, you know, and it's, it's all for the big businesses of America or any globalists, you know, they don't necessarily have to be based in America, but these are like globalists and they're there to 
make even more money. And a little bit of that money, of course, goes to the American people or whoever, whichever countries, you know, are paying these taxes for these people to get filthy, filthy rich. But I'll tell you what, at the end of the day, they don't care about you at all. And as you know, you've heard of you will own nothing and be happy. Well, I'll tell you what, that's what's in the future. And they want that future for everybody. They want these people, these, these multinational globalists, they want to be running everything, them to be living in perfect, beautiful luxury, lots and lots and lots of money and anything else that they could possibly dream of. And the rest of us are just going to be like little servants or, I don't know, maybe our only purpose is to serve them. And if our lives are miserable, then so be it. They're going to be more than happy to have it that way. So, just wondering which way I can go here. Like I said, I don't know where I'm at. And, uh, huh, I don't know. I have no idea what these buildings are. There's no label on them. I'll walk this way. Yeah, but uh, if you look at what's going on in the world, there's two places right now that are, it's like, it's like real evil. It's what's going on in, in uh, those people perpetrating things on Gaza. The people of Gaza and in the Middle East in general, you've got to, let's just be honest, that's a Nazi regime. That's a Nazi, Nazi regime perpetrating this stuff on Gaza. You know, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck and looks like a duck, acts like a duck, well, it must be a duck, you know? So what is the difference between what Netanyahu is out for and what Adolf was out for? And what's the difference between what uh, Zelensky is going out for and all of his people? Not maybe Zelensky himself, but those, that regime that has propped up Zelensky and Adolf. As a matter of fact, they at least come out and admit that they are Nazis in Ukraine. But they don't, they don't come out and say that in Israel. I don't know. I might not be able to say this. I might not be able to say this on YouTube. Okay. So let me just delete that from YouTube. But anyway, whatever this evil is that's going on in Gaza right now is not much different than this evil that's going on in Ukraine at the moment. So, And this was going on in Germany in the 1930s and the 1940s. And these are the same types of people, same type of ideology. And I'll tell you what, that ideology is in its roots in countries such as Latvia, Lithuania, maybe even Poland. I'll tell you what, Poland, they seem to be stuck. <laughs> they seem to be stuck in some sort of a juxtaposition. They don't really know what the heck they're doing. They, you have some Nazis, well, Nazism in Poland, and you have some anti-Nazism in Poland. And it makes you really wonder what is going to be going on there. It seems at the moment, at the moment, the anti-Nazism is actually in a little bit more dominant position right now. I think they got kind of sick of what was uh, uh, going on, maybe. I think they, somebody was saying like five months ago. I don't know exactly when, when things started changing, but uh, you had this sort of a thing where they're backing Kiev and uh, the Nazis over there. But it looks like a lot of people are pushing back. You know, a lot of this is because of the, uh, the grain deal, what's going on, this, uh, this deal whereby the Ukrainian grain can come in without any customs duties or anything like that. And they, even the shipping, the truckers, you know, are getting less paid because they have a different economy over there than they do in the European Union. And of course, it's just dumping prices. And of course, it's putting everybody out of business in Poland, anybody that has any of these uh, uh, agricultural products. So that's not uh, really good. And that's going on with a lot of countries. 
So it really makes you wonder why the European Union and a lot of these other countries, they're letting everything from Ukraine come in with no customs duties or nothing like that. Everything's coming in at rock bottom prices. And it doesn't really happen that way anywhere in the world except, uh, you know, what's going on there. This is really strange. Look at this street. Of course, this is a Saturday. Looks like massages and things like that here. I don't know. What is that? I have no idea. Looks like, look at this. This is back from the Soviets. This has still got a, like a, a Sovietish look to it. Isn't that weird? And it's not that far from the water. Right here in Minsk. I feel like I'm in, in Soviet Russia. Look at that. Of course, there's something written in English. Keep the ball rolling. I don't know what that is. It's a Saturday. You would think shops would be open here. Sharma over there. Some little shop over there selling some fruits across the street. You can't see it, I'm sure, but Coca Cola. Anyway, I'm just kind of rambling right now. So if any of you want to be watching this channel a little bit more, you can do that, but I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be doing too much rambling. This is just a, a, a sort of a, for you to get to know me a little bit. And uh, I was hoping I wouldn't make this thing too long. So what is this here? I have no idea. Some sort of repairs over there? I don't know. <laughs> I should probably do something before I before I'm lost here. Yes, but uh, like I say, those of you that have uh, found this channel at least by uh, uh, finding some sort of a recommendation from the uh, uh, the Canadian family uh, channel uh, mostly what I talk about is it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of politics you know because that's kind of what upsets me and I'm just trying to get it off my chest a lot about what's going on in the world and uh, I suppose what I should be doing is mostly I mean I talk about mostly geopolitics it doesn't have to do so much always with Belarus, but of course, if I could, I can try to throw some things about Belarus in here. Like what's going on lately, what they put out is that uh, in the southern border, on the southern border of Belarus, the Ukrainians have amassed 112 to 114,000 troops. Now that seems sort of strange when uh, they have a shortage of manpower on the front line where the actual fighting really is going on. So why would they waste 114,000 soldiers just sitting there waiting. And not only that, they have the, the entire border area mined. Huge mines and what do they call it, dragon teeth to block uh, any sort of uh, advance that could possibly be coming from Belarus. Although there never has really been an advance coming from Belarus. And I hear a lot of things of people saying, oh yes, uh, at the very beginning they invaded from Belarus. But I think there was some sort of a minor so something that was very, very minor. There was no real invasion from Belarus at the beginning of the special military operation. And I think Lukashenko, the leader of this country, says that there will never be any a war initiated from the soil of Belarus. And of course, there hasn't been either. So he's been in there and they say, oh, he's a dictator. He's been there 30 years, but there's never been a war in 30 years. He's never been in any part of a war. So you think about what the difference is of Belarus compared to say the United States. In the United States, I don't think they can, they can prevent some going to war more than two months. I don't know. They, they seem to be starting a war somewhere or making some bottle, battle or bombing or something somebody. 
You know, they can't seem to go much longer than that. But of course, Belarus has never done that. And then you wonder why are these other countries like the Baltic states, the Chihuahua states, like whoa, 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 whoa. these little uh, like Latvia, Lithuania. Of course, Estonia, there is no border of uh, between Belarus and Estonia. But uh, anyway, from these Lat uh, uh, Chihuahua states. So why are they against Belarus? So what has Belarus ever done to them? Uh, nothing, <laughs> you know, and their citizens can come into Belarus and go shopping and then go home if they want at any time. But of course, that's not uh, reciprocal. The Belarusians can't, are not allowed to go into Latvia or Lithuania or Poland. And they even stopped travel. They stopped train travel going into uh, Poland or into the EU from Belarus. So they cut it off. They cut it off over there in the West. But yet Belarus are the bad guys. Isn't that incredible? And uh, a lot of these people, they, I don't know if they, if they are still able to come over and go shopping in Belarus and then go back because everything's a lot cheaper in Belarus than it is in Latvia and Lithuania and all that. So, so much for, uh, for how great things are over there, right? But uh, they've also threatened, they said that they want to go to war with Belarus. Poland has come right out and said that, elements within the Polish government. You know, it's not Belarus saying they want to go to war with Poland or any of these countries. And then they have something called, what is it, uh, Salawi Gap or whatever like that. And they suspect that Russia and Belarus want to do that because then you can have a, a land bridge, say, between Belarus to Kaliningrad, which is Russian. And uh, I tell you what, if it was me, I would be wanting to do that. But uh, Belarus or Russia, they said they have no desire to do so and they're not going to try to do it. But uh, now they have these, uh, these war games going on, of course, led by no other than the United States, and it's on the border there. And I think a lot of that is centered around that area. So not only do you have this 114,000 Ukrainian military force on the southern border, but you have a lot of American military, NATO military, Germany, everything also on the border of Belarus. So the, Bel the borders of Belarus right now are amassed with a lot of foreign troops. That's just something to keep in mind. You know, I don't know that anything's going to happen. As a matter of fact, I don't think it is. But because uh, that's one reason why Lukashenko felt it imperative that he has to get tactical nuclear weapons. Because Belarus does not have the military size that these other countries have. And nor do they desire to have a military of that size. So anyway, he said, you just, you come in and you, you invade our country and you're going to be in for a big surprise. So that's virtually, virtually all that's, that's going on there. But beyond that, I guess that's about all I'm going to say. Show you around the area here. I don't know. Like I said, I hope I can find my way back. I don't know where I'm at. In Minsk here. Most of this doesn't look like anything different than in Germany, as you notice. Just walk over this way. Here's a I like these old old Russian like Jeeps, it's a Neva. Lada is the com company. Lada Neva. I think they're nice. Like I said, that's the older one. It's kept up really nice. Okay. Well, other than that, I got to work on finding my way back. I guess I'm more towards being inside of the built up part of the city right now. So anyway, thanks for joining me and I hope you guys can uh, join me for the next one. I don't know when that's going to be, but uh, in any case, join us. Uh, and that's going to be what tomorrow, tomorrow from the other side on rumble.com. And that's where our guest, David, Clues is going to be. He's from the Unity uh, News Network. And of course, more, more geopolitics. But I, I have a sense that he's a very humanist type of guy as well. So he's got a lot more following than we do. We're, we're fairly, uh, uh, fairly new, our channel. So once again, join us right there. Okay, from the other side. Thank you very much, everybody. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.